Scripture reading today of God's Word is in Luke 8, 1 through 3. After this, Jesus traveled about from one town village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out. Jonah, the wife of Pusa, the manager of Harold's household, Susan, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. So be it. I won't knock it down too many times. <sighs> Thank you, everybody, for being here. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'm just a little bit nervous. Not too bad. But um, in, do, in my studies, um, getting ready for this, the first time I did this, I had four days. This time I had five weeks. Uh, four days was much better because I didn't have time to change everything so many times. But... Um, And I lost my train of thought, but that's okay. My um, message this morning is about women of the Bible. There are so many of them that need to be mentioned, and there's no way, of course, we can cover them all in, in one day. So I have kind of picked out one that kind of, uh, for some reason, uh, became near and dear to my heart. And um, it tells a beautiful story, as so many of the others do. Um, some of the other women that we might mention was Rehob, the, the, the prostitute that hid the spies and as a result of all that went on, came to the Lord. Job's wife, as so many of the wives in the biblical times, there was great suffering and um, a lot of loss and any of us who have lost children know what that might feel. But Job's wife, um, because of a disagreement between Satan and the Lord, uh, some way or another, um, Job got in the middle of this, and he was punished. And they had a lot of wealth and a lot of uh, animals and a beautiful home and all this. And they just, they lost it all. The cows, the, all the critters were killed in the fields. Their ten children were destroyed. And can you imagine having to look out and look on ten graves of your children. That would be very heart-wrenching. And that's just a small example of some of the, the toils and the, and the hurts that the women of the Bible went through. And also the women of the Bible at that time, in the biblical times, they knew their place. They knew their place in the world. Their husbands were the head of the household, the heads of the church. And Adam, of course, being our first, was made from created from dust. And then Eve, of course, was made from one of Ab's, Adam's ribs. But, and you can see this, and I have seen this since I've been in the church and have this wonderful church family, that my couples that have longevity and have been in the Bible all their lives, you can tell that those women still have those same basic principles. Um, the women of today, of course, as things have evolved over the years, um, the women's uh, rights movement, the um, feminist movement, all this stuff, and, and not that I'm one of them, I can understand where they're coming from in a little bit, but also um, I think uh, the man is the head of the household and, and should be glorified as that. So anyway, a couple, uh, another one I wanted to touch on just for a minute was Eve, of course. Um, I, I think she was the original first lady. Um, uh, she was the first mother of our race and uh, cause of our fall. And as I said a minute ago, Adam came from, was formed from dust. Eve was cre created of Adam's rib. 
When she, was fir when she first appeared, she was called Isha, which is a generic designation meaning woman, wife, or female. After the transgression of the, um, Satan approaching her in the garden and having her eat of, of the fruit that she was not supposed to, after that she was named Eve, a word signifying life because she would be the mother of all. Um, in Timothy 1, Timoth 1 Timothy 2, 11 through 14, Paul says, A woman should learn in quietness and full submission. I do not permit a woman to teach or assume authority over a man. She must be quiet. 1 Corinthians 14, 34 and 35, Women should remain silent in the churches. They are not allowed to speak. They must, they must in submission, as the law says, must stay in submission, as the law says. If they want to inquire about something, they should ask their own husbands at home, for, dis, for it is disgraceful for a woman to speak in church. Well, here I am. <laughs> First Corinthians 11:12. For as woman came from man, so also is a man born of woman but everything comes from God. J.I. Parker, author and evangelical leader said, so should women be involved in the ministry of the church? Absolutely. If women are gifted and called to service in the church is plain and gifted persons are gifts that the churches must properly value and fully use. However, he also notes this call to service, according to the scripture, is not to involve ministerial authority over men. So there you go, ladies. Anyway, um, on with the women of the Bible. Um, I chose Mary Magdalene. And um, my, of course, my first reference was the Bible. The other references I used in my studies was uh, Bible Hub and Bible Gateway. So much of this comes from either or of all of those. Mary Magdalene is called the Magdalene, which identifies her place of birth, just as Jesus is called the Nazarene because of his association with Nazareth. Nazareth. Magdala, Mary's birth place, means tower or castle. In Christ's time, it was a thriving populous town on the coast of Galilee. Dye works and primitive textile factories were businesses there. Mary may have been employed in one of those, for it seems she was not without means, enabling to serve the Lord with her substance. Because of the harlotry practiced in Magnola, it was destroyed. The idea developed that Mary was a prostitute, but there was no genuine evidence of such a bad reputation. The Bible re relates to Mary as pure, though deeply affected woman before she met Jesus. The Magdalene, as she was called after Jesus released her demons, turned out to be one of the most beautiful and faithful characters in the Bible. Mary was a sinner in the same sense as we all are. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Mary suffered periodic insanity. One devil is enough. She had seven. Seven is a mystical number suggesting completeness, implying that when the seven evil spirits took over, Mary's suffering was extreme. When Jesus saw her with her peace of mind and control of will destroyed, she must have been a sight to behold, with disheveled hair, glaring eyes, and sunken cheeks. Her demonic possession did not affect her morals, only her mind. She saw, he saw in her, an angel who would be a blessing to his own heart and to others. He commanded the tormenting de demons to come out of her, and the miracle happened. Sanity returned, the rosy tint was restored to her cheeks, and she was made whole. When Christ saved her, he liberated the highest virtues of sacrifice, fortitude, and courage. Mary became a disciple. Freed from the satanic bondage, she became harnessed to the chariot of the Lord. There were other women who had been healed who greatly aided Jesus in his missionary activities. He went from place to place preaching and teaching. His message, 
uh, preaching and teaching his message. On the move, as Jesus and his disciples were there, were very many details to be attended to. Quiet and effectively, Mary would do what she needed had to be done. Money was necessary for the master's work. Much of it came from Mary and other women like her who had been so blessed by the Lord. Mary followed Jesus on that last and sad journey from Galilee to Jerusalem. Mary was present with the other holy women at the trial of Jesus. Fearless, he is arrested and tried for his life. Some friends had deserted him, but Mary and her band did not forsake him. Mary was there in Pilate's hall and saw the and heard religious leader, leaders clamoring, clamoring. Let me get a drink of water here. Did I leave my water down there, honey? Water, water, water. <laughs> Sorry, getting a little dry. Not that I'm nervous or anything like that. No reason. Uh, Mary was there in Pilate's hall and saw and heard religious leaders clamoring for the blood of him who was so precious to her heart. She listened to Pontius Pilate pronounce as he pronounced his death sentence of crucifixion, although he had found no fault in him. She wept as Jesus left the hall to be ill-treated by the crowd, thirsting for his blood. She saw him led out to Calvary's Mount to be nailed to a tree. Mary was one of the group of holy women who stood as near as they could to comfort Jesus in the closing agonies of crucifixion. But all who had knew him, including women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching those things. Mary listened with a broken heart to his bitter cries until at last the Roman soldier thrust his spear into the Savior's side and declared him dead. An art gallery in the Louvre, there is a painting of the night of the crucifixion. The world is wrapped in shadow, the stars are dead, and yet in the darkness is seen a kneeling form. It is Mary Magdalene, pressed against the bleeding feet of Jesus. Yes, she was there when they crucified her Lord. Joseph and Nicodemus came to prepare him for burial then placing the precious remains in the tomb in the garden. Mary Magdalene sat at the tomb until Joseph had laid the Lord's body away. In Luke 23, 55, it says, the women who came with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Last at the cross where Jesus died, Mary Magdalene was the first at the garden tomb to witness the most important event in world history and the truth of Christianity, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What a great honor God had put upon the faithful Mary Magdalene in pre pre permitting her to be the first witness of the resurrection. In John 20, 11 through 18, I will read that out of the Bible, if I can see it. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying, as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't, did not realize that that was him. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, if you, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out, Rabbani, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my father and your father and to, the go and to the God, your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them what he, that he had said these things to her. Can you imagine how fast she ran back to those disciples? I mean, those little feet must have really been going. What a great honor that he bestowed on her. She was given an honor that cannot be taken away from her, that of being the first among men or women 
to see the risen Christ and receive the first message from his lips. This is the last glimpse of Mary Magdalene we see. We assume that she was present with the women and the apostles who assembled in the upper chamber for the prayer and supplication to, and to await the coming of the promise, promised spirit. That historic day, Pentecost, when a bequeathed guide and comforter came, Mary must have been caught up by his power and made an effective witness of her risen and now ascended Lord. There are a couple lessons we can learn from Mary of Magdala. First in her, we see what Christ is able to do for a woman. When he first met her, she was an afflicted, tormented soul. But Jesus, Jesus healed her and made her his loyal follower. Second is what a woman can do for the one who has done so much for her. There are a thousand ways in which converted and consecrated women can serve the master acceptably. Mary's gratitude and love manifested itself in devotion to Christ. She owed much, gave much, loved much, and served much. She is a reminder that God, by his grace, can redeem even the most horrible life. And I have one other little thing I'd like to read to you. I tell you, when I started all this studying, my cup runneth over. And um, like uh, Rona said, I guess we're going to have a two-hour sermon today, huh? Well, I had to contain myself and keep it down, and I might even be a little early today, but that's okay. This is a little precious book that um, actually John Lehrman gave me, and I've used several lessons out of it. Um, having a real trouble with my glasses this morning. Sorry about that. Blessed are those who have not yet have not seen and yet have followed or believed. God I'm gonna to have to take these off, sorry about that. God I'm sorry. I can't read that. It's too small. Anyway, it all all goes along with what this what the message was. And um I just thank you all for being here and I uh would just like to pray, if we could, for a moment. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the will to get up here and speak among my fellow Christians and just to love them. And I just love you and just hope that um, the words that came out of my mouth were what you wanted me to say. And Lord, I just want you to be with everybody on this long holiday weekend, that they may be safe in their travels and and get home back safely. And all this I just pray in Jesus' name. Um, I have Jacob coming up. He's going to sing a song that I picked out. We have tried to sing it before in a group, and we just didn't ever do it. But it's called Who Am I, which is what I think all of these women that Jesus affected and saved from their terrible afflictions would probably would have said is, Who am I to deserve all this? Oh, 
falling Lord, you catch me when I'm falling And you tell me who I am I'm yours Who am I That the eyes that see my sin Would look on me with love And watch me rise again Who am I That the voice that come to see Will call out through the rain Will come the storm in me Not because of who I am But because of what you've done Not because of what I've done But because of who you are I am a flower quickly fading Here today and down tomorrow Awaits us in the ocean A vapor and the wind Still you hear me when I'm calling Lord, you catch me when I'm falling And you told me who I am I'm Thanks to God the Father through Him. Amen. 